Greetings World of Warcraft adventurers, I'm Alexis and welcome to another episode of Azeroth News. Season 4 is now live, welcoming back the 8 Dragonflight dungeons, giving players one final chance to battle their way to victory before the release of the next expansion. A quick reminder that there is a portal taking players to Uldaman, Legacy of Tyr, in Valdraken by the Titan Researcher area. The dungeons are now adjusted where a mythic plus 5 dungeon in season 4 is roughly the equivalent in difficulty, rewards and mythic plus rating awarded as a mythic 15 in season 3. The maximum rewards will be awarded at mythic plus 10 and mythic 0 is still on a weekly lockout basis. Affixes will be added at plus 2, plus 5 and plus 10. Mythic Zero does not have a timer to complete and players will by default earn 10 Drake Crests on successful completion. Players can earn up to 120 Crests of each type per week in Dragonflight Season 4. This is an increase from the maximum of 90 per week in Season 3. This increase is likely applicable to Season 4 only and the weekly maximum will return to 90 in Season 1 of War Within. However, players aiming to cap the crest this week, be aware. Currently, when you cap on a Season 4 Aspect crest, you will get Season 3 Worm Crests instead. This was discovered by players that have already capped their crests. Hopefully, this will be fixed sooner than later. Dedicated players will be able to obtain their new Keystone Master Mount, Infinite Armoradon, by completing the Dragonflight Keystone Master Season 4 achievement, a new title, the Draconic, when reaching a rating of 1.5k rating, and the Draconic Hero when reaching a Mythic Plus rating in the top 0.1% of all players in your region. Players will also have a chance to battle in the three raids released in Dragonflight as Awakened Raids. Blizzard has announced that the Dragonflight raids will be awakened starting the week of June 4th, which will limit players' opportunities to overgear. The raids will first be available for two weeks and on the seventh week they will be available as fated raids and the rotation will be on a weekly basis. The raid bosses and trash health and damage have been nerfed by 10% even when not awoken so players still pushing Mythic Farak will have a better chance of defeating him and getting the reins of Anurelos Flames of Guidance. There will also be a buff enabled whenever a specific raid is awakened, which will increase reputation gain with Dragonflight reputations. All three raids will also drop a new tier token to exchange for the new tier pieces with the appearance and set bonus combination that players voted for. The new tier set bonuses for Season 4 do not mix and match with Season 3 tier set bonus. For many specs, the tier set that won the Season 4 poll is the same set bonus as Season 3. However, even though the set bonus is exactly the same, having two pieces from Season 3 and two pieces from Season 4 will not get you a 4 set bonus. Players can earn one bronze bullion a week by defeating awakened bosses and if by any chance you miss a week, you will be able to catch up to the current weekly maximum. These bronze bullions can be exchanged for weapons and powerful items from the Dragonfly trades from the vendors in the Parting Glass in Valdraken. There's also a vendor nearby that sells Jigglesworth Senior for 3 bullions and cosmetics that grants you the choice of any raid weapon appearance at any difficulty color for 1 bullion each. Legendary items will drop as usual from raids, but players who have previously obtained them can purchase a scale of awakening to upgrade their items to season 4 item levels. The base level for the item level will be 502 and can be upgraded further using crests and flight stones. Completing all three Awakened Dragonflight raids will award the Voyaging Wilderling Dynamic Flying Mount on normal difficulty, the title Awakened Hero at Heroic difficulty, and raid portals when completing the raids on Mythic difficulty. With Season 4, PvP rankings have also been reset, with new gear sets, mounts, titles, and more available for players to achieve. Players are able to earn the Vicious Dream Talon Mount with Horde and Alliance versions by competing in Rated Arenas and Rated Battlegrounds, the Draconic Gladiator title and Gladiator's Drake for earning the Gladiator achievement, and the Draconic Legend title can be earned after earning the Draconic Legend achievement when ending the season on the top 0.1% of the Solo Shuffle Ladder. The Cataclysm charges are resetting with the weekly reset and each character can get one charge per week increased from the previous season which awarded a charge every two weeks. 
Season 4 also brings with it a new spark of awakening for crafting. This week, players are able to obtain two splintered spark of awakening, turning them into a full spark. For the first piece, players can complete the weekly open world quest from the Dragon Isles Emissary, Therazel, and Vildraken. The quests rotate on a weekly basis between Dragon Isles, Zaralek Caverns, and Emergisul. This week, we are starting with the Dragon Isles, where players need to complete a community feast, a hunt, and the siege of Dragonbane Keep. The second Splintered Spark can be obtained as a random drop from Mythic Plus Dungeons and Raid Bosses, allowing players to complete a full Spark this week. In the following weeks, players will only be able to get half a Spark per week. Patch 10.2.7 The Dark Hearth is being released on May 7th, which is the final chapter of the Dragonflight expansion, setting the stage for the story in the upcoming expansion, The War Within. Drane and Troll characters can also embark on new questlines to claim their new heritage armors, Kulturan humans can select from new 6 hair colors, and maximum level characters will gain access to all of Dragonflight regardless of renown, amongst other upcoming surprises. Some other interesting news, in the Dark Heart patch, the maximum number of characters that can be created on a World of Warcraft account is increasing from 60 to 65 some new slots for new race and class combinations, or some new slots available for the new earthen race coming in War Within. Also, in patch 10.2.7, players will be able to design their own personal tabard, following a short questline in Voldraken. The tabard can be customized with its own icons, colors, border, and background. The tabard is unlocked account-wide, however, the tabard designs are character-specific, allowing each character to customize the tabard as they see fit. This week, players can go back in time and battle it out in the Burning Crusade Time Walking Dungeons. Players can take the quest A Burning Path Through Time from the middle of Veldraken, which awards a 493 item level piece of equipment for your loot specialization. Players can also take the raid quest Disturbance Detected Black Temple from Vormu in Shatra, which will award a Season 4 piece of gear for defeating Illidan, and a chance to drop one of the pets or mounts obtained in each of the Outland raids. A couple of friends of mine were lucky to get Ashes of Alar. Let's hope this mount finds its way to anyone that is still baffled by its low drop rate. Blizzard has announced that World of Warcraft Remix Mist of Pandaria is launching on May 16th at 10 a.m. PDT globally, and according to the time walking within Alpha, the event will be ending on August 19th. The date has not yet been confirmed, however, this time span will give players 3 months to enjoy the remixed content and chase its huge collection of rewards. And in upcoming events, on Sunday 28th April, there is a micro-holiday Volunteer Guard Day. Take some time to celebrate the hard work of the guards in Azeroth and Draenor by saluting them to show your appreciation. On Monday 29th April, Children's Week will begin giving players an opportunity to show an orphan what the hero life looks like. This event will last until Monday, April 6th. On April 30th, the Northrend Cup will begin, where dragon riders can soar through the Northrend skies in this dragon riding racing event. The challenge consists of 10 races across Northrend on normal, advanced and reverse variations to earn riders of Azeroth badges to exchange for rewards with Musta and Veldraken. Completing these races on gold will award the achievement Northrend Racing Completionist Gold, Northrend Racer title, and the Ruby Riders of Azeroth Tabard. This event ends on May 14th. Also, April 30th brings with it the end of Plunderstorm as it sails away from the shores of Dragonflight, so be sure to get your rewards before this event ends. And that's it for this week's news. Be sure to give this channel subscribe to continue receiving updates. I'm Alexis for Azeroth News. Until we meet again, Dark Lady, watch over you.